Hey guys, this is Grandmaster Eugene Perlstein for ChessOpeningsExplained.com and today I want to cover with you the so-called Owen defense move 1 b6. So after the moves e4, black plays this odd looking move b6. Well, I can tell you this it is really, really rare. I might have faced it only once in my lifetime, yet at the club level, you may be surprised. And especially if you know somebody who really loves this opening, you need to be well prepared. So obviously, when somebody plays a move like b6 and says, please take over the center, you should say, thank you, and take over the center with the move d4. This is the right way to approach this, uh, this opening. And after bishop b7, I really like the plan of bishop going to d3. And the idea here is that you later may want to play c3. And that is the reason why we don't want to take the square uh, with the knight. Because if you play knight c3 in the future, black may pin the knight with bishop b4 and try to get some counterplay. So e6, that's the typical way black plays this opening. So it's kind of like a French idea, maybe d5 will come in later, maybe c5 Sicilian ideas, knight f3, c5, and here is when we play c3. So whenever black plays d5, we meet it with e5 and get a favorable French. So what would happen here? Well, typically knight f6, and again, we don't want to kind of play e5 and play into black's hand because this bishop is going to be very powerful in diagonal. Instead, I like the move Queen e2. This is a very simple strategy. We want to contain the center, stop black from getting any counterplay, and finish development. Bishop e7, castles, and here black can play d5 or knight c6. If d5, as I mentioned, it's like a good French, knight goes back, knight d2, knight c6. Here I like the move a3. The idea being is that you kind of proactively stop this plan of c takes d, c takes d, knight b4, followed by bishop b1, bishop a6, and because of this pressure, you may actually lose the exchange. So a3 is the key move to remember, and you're fine. And the same happens here in the main line after knight c6. We again anticipate c takes d, c takes d, knight b4, and a3 gives white a very pleasant position. So again, here, Black has tried several ways. The most recent attempt was played by about a 2300 player against none other than Peter Leko. And Peter is a well-known opening theoretician. And this game happened in the Isle of Man where Black played knight a5. By the way, I should mention that d5, e5, knight d7 here, White gets an extra option to play b4, completely killing off the bishop on b7. The plan is quite simple, knight bd2, Rook e1, knight f1, knight g3, and checkmate the king, which eventually castles kingside. So this is a nice edge. Anyway, let's look at the game between Peter Leko and Karthik. Um, this guy is about 2300, and he played knight a5. So what's the idea of knight a5? Well, maybe c4 and knight b3, and just kind of use those light square weaknesses. So I like what Peter Leko does. Knight bd2, c4. And we don't want to trade the e-pawn for the c-pawn. And simple bishop c2. White maintains the massive center and stands better. After queen c7, you guys already know the plan. This plan with the knight on d2 is very common in many different openings, including the Roy Lopez, where you play rook e1, knight f1, knight g3, and start putting pressure on the king, which eventually castle. So rook e1, castles, knight f1. And here, okay, this is probably as far as you need to remember, white is already slightly better. But let's see what happened in the game. Knight h5, so black is trying to jump the knight to f4, and here Peter immediately takes advantage of it. Knight e5, x clam. Well, black has to play g6, otherwise what's the point of knight h5? Another tempo move, bishop h6. You see how white's pieces are entering the game really quickly. Knight g7, and now f4. Total domination, just simply look at this position. Three beautiful central pawns supporting the knight. The bishop is putting pressure on the king side. 
I'm not sure what these guys are doing, but they're definitely not participating in the game. So now, after the move d6, Leko redirects the knight to g4, rook e8, and e5. This is the move that kind of seals the deal. At this point, we don't care about this bishop, because that's really the only good piece for black. This knight is totally off sides, this knight is pinned, the bishop doesn't really do anything except defend the f6 square, and white will break through. So let's just see how the game continues. f6, pawn takes, bishop takes, knight takes check, rook takes. So black managed to get some counterplay, but in return, black gave up the darks for bishop. So now white needs to activate the knight on f1. Knight e3, excellent move, knight h5, and now Peter plays queen g4, and really undermining the fact that this guy on g8, the king, is relatively weak. The idea is to push f5 at the right moment. Queen c6, and now Leko just builds up to bring the, all the pieces into the attack. Queen h4, rook f7, rook f1, and now everybody's ready for the final assault. Knight g4, rook c7, and double up. f5 is more or less imminent. Let's see how the game finished. Not too many moves left. Knight c6, a4, just kind of distracting that queen, queen a5, and f5, x clan. At this point, the attack is simply going to come crushing through. And after pawn takes, bishop takes, black decided to call it a day and simply resign. Wow, what happened? Well, let's take a look why black resigned. After bishop takes, rook takes, pawn takes, the king is so exposed that there may be checkmate. Takes first, hitting the rook. And let's say black gets the rook out of the way. Another check. Notice the king cannot go to the f-file because rook takes f5. Check again. And now, guys, can you find the beautiful move that will finish the game on the spot? Honestly, there's more than one win. Rook takes f5 does the job. But to me, bishop f8 is the most beautiful. Clearance, sacrifice, and knight h6 main. Wow, what a game. And Peter Leko definitely proved the better prepared player. So again, let's summarize some key moments of the game. So first things first, after you meet this O in defense, you simply put the bishop on d3. The point is to play c3. Then the queen goes to e2 to protect the e pawn. And later on, whenever you see the move knight c6, you autopilot make the move a3. Again, if you don't play that move, c takes d4, c takes d knight b4 is really annoying. And after this, Everything is simple. Knight bd2, c4, don't even care about that pawn. Maintain the center. Rook e1, knight f1, knight g3. What an incredible attack. Hopefully, you'll make your opponent the same way Peter Leko did. Thank you very much. This was Grandmaster Eugene Perlstein for ChessOpenInkExplained.com.